Hi all, Retro Tech Chris here again. Once again, it's the month of September, and that means Septandy, where we talk about all things Tandy. Today, I'm going to show you my Tandy 1000 SX, and it's got some cool components in it. First, we're going to talk about the purchase of this machine, then the components in this machine. From there, I'll show you some of the software installed, and then we'll have a look at a really cool accelerator card. And after that, I have some bonus content where I can show you all of the fun I had with the Bernoulli drive you see installed in the system. So without further ado, let's go. So I actually purchased this Tandy last year in December, and it checked a lot of boxes on my list. Being within my retro budget was not one of them. Look at the beautiful box that it came in. It's in great shape and it's really cool to have this original artifact. It's nicely packaged in the box as you can see. And once we remove that insert which holds the keyboard and power cable, we can see the Tandy nestled nicely in the bottom of the box. And here's the first picture I took of the Tandy. It's really clean and in great shape. The Tandy also came with this Bernoulli disc that you see here. This is the beginning of a discussion which will get really interesting as we go throughout the video. The keyboard that came with the Tandy was also missing a key or two, so I picked up this keyboard here for a really great price. Now let's talk about the components. A stock Tandy 1000SX has a 7.16 MHz 8088-2 processor and 384 kilobytes of memory. This particular model has upgrades in both of those departments. Looking at the front of the case, we have the reset button, keyboard input, and two ports for joysticks. And we also have this lovely Bernoulli drive, which we'll talk about, and this three and a half inch floppy drive. On the back of the system, we have this nice sticker telling us about the Tandy, the fan, the power input, and the power switch on the side, which we'll see in a minute. We also have an edge connector printer port, a light pen port, which nobody ever uses, a video output, as well as composite video and audio output. And installed, we have a network card, a processor upgrade accelerator card, a SCSI card, an XT IDE, and a standard 8 bit IO card. We'll see more of that in a minute. Here you can see that power switch on the side. I always love the toggle switch used by Tandys. I also have this Tandy Deluxe Craft joystick that you see right here. I have other ones, but we won't be showcasing those. And you can see it has the standard Tandy input. I also have a Radio Shack mouse, which was not shipped with a Tandy or otherwise, but it puts the bill nicely and it is a serial mouse. Let's go ahead and get the cover off so we can have a look inside. And the first thing we see is this huge speaker, which puts out great sound. In order to get to the expansion cards, I have to remove this connector or brace or whatever you want to call it. And it was a little bit difficult to do with one hand. After struggling a while, I finally got it free. And now we can see our expansion cards. I'll go ahead and take the screws out, trying a couple of different screwdrivers and dropping several screws perhaps as we go through it. There goes that one. And from there, all the cards are free and we can start to pull them out. We'll start with this card here, which we can see is a SIG multiple I.O. parallel and serial card. Next, we have this very nice Monotech XTCF card with a 256 megabyte flash card installed. Next, we have this iOmega PC2B controller card, which is used to drive the Bernoulli drive. And next, we have the processor accelerator card a 286 Express card. We can pull this little module off, and once we do that, we'll be able to see the 286 processor underneath, and we can see the rest of the card as well, with some dip switches for setting various settings and the like. And here you can see the attachment to that board, which actually attaches to the motherboard's CPU socket. And finally, we'll pull out this network card that you see here, it's an Intel 816. It does have a 16-bit ISA bus. However, it works in an 8-bit slot. 
We also have five ISA slots for expansion. And I have installed a SmartWatch Plus that you see on the top there to replace the dead SmartWatch that came with the system that you see on the bottom. And there it is, nice and installed on the motherboard. And here you can see that CPU socket connector that comes from the processor accelerator card. Here's another up close look of that accelerator card. And if we zoom in really close, we can see the 286-8 processor. And here, once again, is a close-up of the XTCF card. And on boot up, we can see that the card initializes its option ROM using the XTIDE Universal BIOS and detects the 256 megabyte SanDisk card. And once again, here is a close-up on that iOmega PC2B card Here's that SIG Multi-IO card again. SIG makes great cards. I'm glad to have this one in the system. And here we have that Intel 816 LAN adapter again. Once again, with a 16-bit bus, and you can see that there's no boot ROM installed on this card. Now, even though this 16-bit card works in an 8-bit slot, you have to be careful. You don't want to install it too close to components that could cause damage or other problems. The two slots I've chosen so far are no good. However, if we put this on the slot on the far right, we're going to be in really good shape because no components are touching. Next, we'll have a closer look at the Bernoulli drive. On boot up, you can see that the PS2 ASPI manager initializes the card, the bus gets scanned, and the iOmega Beta 20Z drive gets detected. Let's go ahead and put a disk in the drive and give it a listen. Now I'll take a minute and explore some of the iOmega utilities, and we can listen to the drive as we go through this. We'll also do some file copying. Once again, have a listen. And since we're doing drive ASMR today, let's go ahead and listen to the floppy seek on boot up. On Tandy's, it's kind of unique. Let's have a look at some of the software installed on the system. Given it's a Tandy, we're going to start with Deskmate. And I'll launch the calendar because why not? Deskmate is cool. Deskmate is Tandy. I'll also try to launch the paint program and fail miserably. I think I'm doing something wrong here and we're not seeing the image I tried to load, but oh well, at least I tried. I'll try to open it here. I think that it is open if I look at the top title bar but it is what it is. Next, let's listen to an audio clip that takes advantage of the three voice sound that is Tandy. So one of my favorite games back in the day was Flightmare, and it's a CGA game. Let's go ahead and launch it, bearing in mind that the Tandy is currently in 286 mode. And as such, it's going to play a little fast. So what we'll do is first we'll play this in 286 mode, and then after I crash, I'll flip it over to 8088 mode, and you can see the stark difference between the two. Hmm. 
I've also launched Windows 3.0, and I went ahead and loaded up Solitaire. And as we can see, it takes a good 17 seconds or so for this to completely load up. I wouldn't recommend playing Solitaire on this system. I've also loaded up Print Shop, where I've made this <clears throat> great card. We'll go ahead and print it out <laughs> just to see what we get. And there you have it. It turned out absolutely wonderfully. It actually looks better on paper, as terrible as it is. Next, I'm going to play for you OutRun. Just give this a listen and have a look at those Tandy graphics. In addition to games, I'm also set up for networking on the Tandy. We can map a drive, here I'm mapped to my Raspberry Pi, and do a directory listing. We can also run MTCP after we load a packet driver. So I'll get that loaded, and from there we can go ahead and launch the TCP configurations that I've put into a batch file, and from there we can go ahead and try and ping Google, and there you have it, our Tandy 1000 SX is on the internet. Now let's talk about the accelerator. This 286 Express card is really cool. And here you can see that it's set up to work on either a Tandy 1000SX or a 1000 or 1000A. It's very specialized for the Tandy 1000 series. Here's a page from the manual where you can see, once again, pictures of Tandys. If we start the system up in 8088 mode or don't switch it to 286 mode and go into check it, we're going to be presented with an 8088 XT machine. Now, once we flip over to 286 mode, you can see we now have a 8286 XT machine. The 286 Express card actually has a demo program. We'll go ahead and run it in 8088 mode and then 8286 mode. Here you can see it in 8088 mode. We've done a quick switch to 286 mode, and if we run the demo again, we will see those color blocks draw much faster. So that 286 processor is really working hard for us. Next, let's have a look at Landmark, where 8088 mode tells us that we are a 3 MHz AT, whereas we get a 9 MHz AT in 286 mode. As for Check It, we're 1.2 times an IBM PC XT in 8088 mode, and in 286 mode, we're 2.82 times an IBM PC XT. Much like we put the 286 Express in 8286 mode, we can also flip it back to 8088 mode. One interesting quirk of the Express 286 is that you can't set the smartwatch in 8286 mode. So on boot up, I actually flip into 8088 mode, I set the clock, and then from there I flip back to 286 mode. Now let's talk about this lovely Bernoulli drive that you see in the front of this machine and how it's had the most incredible saga. If you were watching really closely when I showed this first picture I took of the Tandy 1000SX, 
you can see that the Bernoulli drive in it is slightly different. And that would be because I swapped it out for the drive that you see on the top of the system. I purchased this 20Z Bernoulli drive for $30 on eBay. Even though this drive looks like an external drive, if we open up the case by undoing these tabs that you see here and lift up, we can see that it's basically identical to an internal drive. It's really just an internal drive with a power supply and a fan and an enclosure. If we look around the back, we can see where we could daisy chain multiple SCSI devices. And you'll notice there's a piece missing right here. That's actually a selector. And I taped it inside of the Tandy 1000 so that I could choose which SCSI ID is associated with this drive easily. The reason I went down a bit of a rabbit hole relates to this general error that I got formatting pretty much every Bernoulli disk I was able to get my hands on. But after getting a new drive, I got a lot more format successfuls. Let's talk about an interesting feature of the Bernoulli media. Here you can see that this particular disk has some bad blocks on it. However, after we format it, the bad blocks went away. What happened? Well, we can have a look at a technical description manual for a Bernoulli Alpha 10. Bear in mind, our drive is a Beta 20, but it's really hard to find documentation online, so this will have to do. Here's some information about flagging defects that it talks about at the bottom of the page. And if we flip to the next page, we get this nice paragraph that basically says, yes, indeed, there are spare tracks. So if there's an issue with bad blocks, they will be replaced by good tracks. And I speculate if we get too many bad tracks, the media will then fail to format. And that's what I have experienced. However, I did go down multiple rabbit holes before coming to this conclusion, including buying an Adaptech AHA 1522 card, trying to build some Linux drivers and running this on my Pentium Pro, in which case I got the same identical behavior I was getting on the Tandy. So in all cases, there must be something slightly wrong with that original Bernoulli drive. However, in the meantime, I did collect a lot of media and you would think, wow, where did you find all of this? Various places. <laughs> it's actually not really easy to find these disks. Here you can see me pulling one out of the pouch there just to get a closer look at it. What's kind of interesting is I actually talked to people all across the world and was sent disks. And not long after that, there was a place about 30 miles from here that put nine disks out for sale, a recycler. And I've actually been there. So I purchased those as well, and now I think I have plenty of disks. In all cases, thank you for watching. I hope you have a most spectacular Septandi, and we will see you next time. Bye for now.